Well, hello. Um, I'm going to present some work which I've been studying over the summer. It is super work in progress, and I'm really happy that I have this chance here at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. So it's about cargo GPU build. So how do we tell cargo that we want to run our code on a GPU? Because my interest is generally in scientific computing. So I think we have some pretty good linear algebra libraries, um, like FAIR under development. So that's a pretty big base building block. And we have really good performance on a CPU. We don't have to hide behind C++ or so, uh, Fortran, for example. We do have this benefit of our compiler preventing a lot of bugs, just even data races um, and telling us what not to do. So I think it's reasonably fast to develop scientific computing in Rust. And as well, I've been presenting yesterday, we also have some out of the support in progress for the Rust language. However, one thing which really bugs me is that I'm not super happy about the GPU support. And I think that's just something which we need. The other big topic which I would really like to see in the future is MLIR support. Um, so that's another compiler backend besides of LVM, which is able to do more high level op optimizations, for example, math ones, but that's a bit beyond this talk. So today I'm gonna to focus on the GPU side on what we can do to make this a bit more doable. Um, of course, there are a couple of projects which are already existing out there, which are, in my opinion, technically usable for scientific computing, but they're not completely there yet. So the first one is Rust CUDA. Um, first thing is it's NVIDIA only. And I mean, yeah. CUDA is a great library, a great environment, but we would like to have some other AMD and G, uh, Intel GPUs too. Also there is IPU support and TPU uh, support, which we probably also want in the future. So just run on like some of those modern code devices, which are able to speed up multiplication even in GPUs. Also Rust CUDA, correct me, but I think it hasn't been super actively developed in the last time. So, that would be a bit bad to take as a base. We have Rust GPU, which is BLV only. And since a lot of the tooling I'm working on is LVM based, that's a bit tricky because there's some correlation between SPLV and LVM, which is the current compiler backend of Rust C. But it, then again, um, I think also it's currently in the process of being transferred from being uh, maintained by a, a company to be maintained by a community. So that might also be tricky. And we also have this issue that it's mainly developed it originally got developed for um, graphic kernels, even though they had some work going on for the compute side. So what I'm working on is currently Rust offload. It's similar to Enzyme, completely based on LVM. So on the Rust side, as a like from compiler perspective, we don't really have to maintain anything. We just have to expose it, which is great because now the bug fixing and all this effort is shared between different languages. Let's say Rust, C++ potentially, if they care, uh, Fortran, so that's what I like. Um, and now we do have this issue of safety because in a lot of languages, you can just assume a user should not do something obviously wrong. On the Rust side, we have to take it in, uh, into consideration and just if the user makes a mistake, our compiler should catch it and tell about it, or at least not produce a stack for it. And for CUDA, we have an, a, a simple add example. And we see our input types are common Rust types. We have slices here of floats, which is reasonable. Uh, since for GPU kernel, we want to operate on a larger uh, batch, like either a vector or a slice. And then each thread takes one element of this uh, slice and operates on it in parallel. The only issue is Rust has really strict aliasing rules, which all, in most cases is great because it gives you great performance. It says, here's the compiler, if we have a reference type, then there are no two references pointing to the same memory location. For GPU programming and our type of parallelism, it's great because we know if we just write into some memory location, no other point reference is going to get updated. But that's just plain wrong if you look at GPU kernels because the whole point of it is we want to work in parallel. So we do have to drop back from the fancy Rust types which we normally have all output types. We have to drop back to C level. So we have to use raw pointer. That's just nothing which we really want to build an ecosystem up on because there are just too many memory safety bugs. It's, it's an improvement of our uh, C or CUDA, raw CUDA class because we do have safe input types. But I mean, if we uh, start from scratch, we might as well do it a bit safer. So yeah, um, my question was, can we split a bit safer? So the scheduling part is the one where we 
take a big input chunk and try to split up to different kernels. And I think that's inherently unsafe. So there's not too much to do about it. But on the Rust side, we usually try to write safe abstractions. So we do have an unsafe code section, which we try to wrap up, which we make easy to test. And everything outside of it should be safe. It should just rely on these abstractions being correct. And as an abstraction, which I came up for the GPU case is that we effectively have three locations. So we do want to write our kernel, which I have a tentative um, offload macro here on top of it, just to, just to register such a function as being offloadable that is run on a GPU, TPU, or whichever device we have. And in my case, it's actually completely safe. So we do also have mutable references output types. The main reason why I can do it is because here we have a single uh, element. So we have been splitting it up before. And that's being done by the scheduler, where we do take, in this case, again, it's unsafe. Um, we take the whole vector as an input. So this scheduling is unsafe because it does, based on a given index, um, say which elements do we pass to a specific kernel invocation. And it is not perfect yet, um, but it's somewhat similar to some other language. So the index here, you can think of it as a threat index in, for example, CUDA, where you usually have X, Y, Z coordinate. I simplified it to one for now. Um, we do some unsafe indexing. This one is for scalar indexing, but of course we could also do batching um, where we give larger chunks to each subkernel. Um, the main issue is here, if we do some of our indexing math wrong, which in this case is easy enough to be somewhat confident, if we get our indexing math wrong, we immediately have undefined behavior. So this would mean we give the same memory, uh, a reference to the same memory to different kernel invocations, and that's just immediately undefined behavior. So here we really have to be cautious, but the benefit is our kernel itself is safe. We just split up the unsafe code section. And if we assume that we can share some of these schedulers, then we can either provide them as a part of the Rust compilers, maybe the standard library, which allows enough people to test it, or at least if people have somewhat unique uh, ideas for the scheduling, they can put it into a library, which still can be verified by other users. And then our offloading is nice. It has small benefits over some other languages because we hope that due to ownership in Rust, we are able to automatically move your memory because we hope that we are able to tell you some like these for, uh, vectors, for example, start on a CPU. We can recognize that, just automatically send them over to a GPU. If you now have following calls on a GPU, eventually we can just reuse them. Um, later, if you might be printing them on G uh, CPU, we can just send them back for you. It's We are not 100% about this aspect yet, if in our case we be able to do so, but we hope. And exactly, so for the scheduling, um, the three default modes which I'm going to implement as part of the standard library are scalar, which I've been showing here, batching, where effectively instead of a single index, we just take a chunk, and then index set, where we say, OK, maybe we have some stencil operations. They are not completely sequential. Uh, but like if you look at the matrix, we have one element in row one. We have three elements in the following row and one in the lowest row. So this, it's somewhat consecutive for like subsets. So we have a set of ranges. And that's also copies from some other libraries. So it's not a completely unique concept here. And yeah. So does it work? Yes, uh, I do have examples running like a couple of uh, Rust kernels. We just compile them to LVMIR, do a little bit of processing. Um, we do have still like a lot of the call side is done on the C++ file just because it's it's convenient to use, but there's no technical reason why we couldn't rewrite that part. And the benefit of LVM offload again is it's well tested. We share it with the LVM backend in different language. For example, OpenMP offload is just the same what I'm showing here. They just have a different front end. And the idea of having this index set, batch set, and um, in the, uh, scalar batching and index set is taken from Raja. So it's not completely new. We hopefully have some nice abstractions, and we do support all those vendors out there. Raw CUDA kernels might be faster, but at least I hope to cover a decent amount of those cases. So yeah, thanks for listening to my talk, and let me know if you have any questions.